at first via CIA squads in Afghanistan. But they're unable to catch bin Laden. Even when U.S. armed forces head into the Hindu Kush region in late 2001, the quarry is nowhere to be found. For years, the Americans presumed that bin Laden is hiding in the mountains of Afghanistan or the tribal regions of Pakistan. The, the search for bin Laden and the decade that that took, I think at times was a, it, there was a source of an enormous frustration for the intelligence community, if not, if not almost embarrassment, right? How could you have all of these resources, all of these people devoted to this search and turn up so little? Um, there were, um, in terms of the public investment in this, it waned at times, right? There were other things that were happening. There was the invasion in Iraq and that ugly aftermath of the war in Iraq, um, the unraveling of that war. I mean, that diverted not only resources from the search for bin Laden, but diverted the public's attention from the search for bin Laden. The search for bin Laden poses a challenge for U.S. investigators at CIA headquarters in Langley, Virginia. Their work demands a lot of time and even more patience. Well, they always had a dedicated unit of analysts who became essentially target analysts. So their responsibility was to collect and uh, synthesize and analyze all of the information about where he might be and to then send out messages to CIA stations around the world asking them to follow up on one clue or another clue. It was obvious from 2002 forward that there was some kind of courier network serving bin Laden because his tapes came to Al Jazeera and to other outlets by some means. There had to be some handing. So the CIA was searching for those couriers, trying to follow the trail back uh, from when the tapes were dropped. And this was an obvious uh, course of investigation. And uh, along the way, some information started to surface about the important names in this courier network. As of 2010, the Americans keep a man under surveillance who once had connections to Al-Qaeda and apparently provides courier services in Pakistan. They don't know who he works for yet. Al-Qaeda's third in command, Atiyah Tala, warns Osama. I previously wrote to you my opinion that we should reduce our correspondence. But bin Laden doesn't want to reduce contact any further. He writes, the facts prove that the American technology and advanced systems cannot capture a Mujahid if he does not make a security violation that will lead them to him. Bin Laden has reason for caution. His hideout is within the Americans' reach. Since 2009, they've been flying more and more special missions from their bases in Afghanistan. Night after night, a unit is airdropped somewhere to search houses and take out key opponents. The Americans deploy another weapon to serve this purpose too, drones, unmanned remote controlled aircraft. Bin Laden is aware of the threat, he writes. The spying war and spying aircraft benefited the enemy greatly and led to the killing of many jihadi cadres, leaders and others. This is something that is concerning us and exhausting us. for the CIA, this was a, a capability that those involved in counterterrorism mission, um, they just saw its potential sooner than their counterparts in the military who regarded this as this odd aircraft, what, what possible use could this be? It's, you know, um, they didn't see what it could do as quickly or readily as the CIA did. And so the CIA basically adopted this, adopted this platform, adopted this aircraft and developed it. Um, and, has, um, and has enhanced it uh, in ways that um, are quite remarkable, right? I mean, there is, there is almost a choreography now um, to the way that they conduct surveillance and even strikes with drone aircraft. In 2009, a drone strike in the Pakistani-Afghani border region kills bin Laden's 30-year-old son, Saad. He belonged to the top echelon in Al-Qaeda and had been tipped 
as his father's successor. He is behind the massive use of drones, U.S. President Barack Obama. And he is the Americans' key military commander, General Petraeus. Both of them become targets of Osama bin Laden's fantasies of revenge and omnipotence. I asked to prepare two groups with the mission of anticipating and spotting the visits of Obama or Petraeus to Afghanistan or Pakistan to target the aircraft of either one of them. Obama is the head of infidelity. As for Petraeus, he is the man of the hour in this last year of the war, and killing him would alter the war's path. Those are the sorts of things you can't rule out, but seemed increasingly unlikely, it seemed increasingly um, almost as if he, you know, evidence that bin Laden had lost some grip on the reality of the organization he was running uh, and its capabilities. Uh, so it was sort of a pie in the sky idea. By that time, CIA search units are already keeping the compound in Abbottabad under airborne surveillance. From the ground as well. They even count the pieces of laundry on the clothesline to figure out the number of inhabitants. Yet, they never catch sight of bin Laden himself. Since early 2011, U.S. President Obama has received regular reports on one of the residents of the house in Obotobad, who was identified as a member of Al-Qaeda and apparently works as a courier for an important person. One of the things the CIA did was, OK, what are the alternative explanations for this? Is this a drug dealer who is just keeping a low profile, which is perfectly plausible in that part of the world? Is this some peep member of Al-Qaeda that is not bin Laden? There were alternative explanations, but none were as good as potentially as bin Laden. After nearly 10 years of fruitless searching, finally, a hot lead. At the White House, President Obama decides it's time to act. In the spring of 2011, he sends Navy SEALs to Abbottabad. Whether they're actually going to find bin Laden there is anything but certain. This was not an easy decision. This, there were doubters in that room who were arguing against, against proceeding in this way, proceeding with a raid instead of just dropping a bomb or sending a drone. The president reportedly also decides not to notify the Pakistani government in advance. However, some issues regarding Pakistan's role still remain. I do think there are aspects of the hunt for bin Laden uh, and the um, communication uh, with the Pakistanis that we may not know everything about. Uh, in history, these kinds of very sensitive, secret, fugitive hunts, they usually reveal a few layers as the years go on and as, and as more documents become available. Today, the essential facts are commonly known. U.S. Navy SEAL commandos take off from the USA on April 26, 2011, and arrive in Afghanistan after a stopover in Ramstein, Germany. Because they were not convinced that bin Laden was there. They, some people thought it was very likely, some people thought it was maybe. And um, it was a very, I think, look, I think President Obama made, uh, you know, clearly he made the right decision. I think he made a very tough call. On the evening of May 1st, 2011, two commandos set off for Abbottabad from a U.S. base in Jalalabad in Afghanistan. Their flight leaves around 11 p.m. and takes about 90 minutes. The Pakistani Air Force doesn't react to it. There was no aerial threat from Afghanistan, from our western borders. There was no threat by air or incursion by air from Afghanistan. The aerial threat was all from India. So all our radars and anti-aircraft devices were placed on that border, not on this border. What is more, the Americans knew which areas were totally undefended, where there were no people. And they could fly through those valleys, low fly through those valleys, which, and they could gain entrance, which is what they did. That night, Osama bin Laden goes to bed as usual, on the third floor of the house, in the bedroom he shares with his wife, Amal. One a.m., 
U.S. Navy SEALs infiltrate the compound. One of the commando units kills bin Laden's two couriers and one of his adult sons during a firefight. Another unit heads off in search of the target. Osama bin Laden offers no resistance. A few hours later, a VTOL jet lands on the US aircraft carrier Carl Vinson, stationed in the Indian Ocean. Bin Laden's body is on board. The Americans have left his wives and children behind in a Botobad, handcuffed. On the aircraft carrier, Bin Laden's body is prepared for burial according to Islamic ritual. Bin Laden is given a burial at sea. This way his body will never be found. 